Hi. Hi, thank you. Thank you so much for your time. And it's an amazing movie. How was like the approach to the to to the to the sound with this this scene? Is how's how is this process work? Uh, I, maybe maybe I will catch up just on this question and let you guys uh, do, of course, uh, um, the talk. Um, the process was pretty different from from what we are used to do. Um, in a way that we had to, because the movie started about the sound, just about the lockdown in early March, uh, we had to adapt really quickly because um, the studios uh, were closed at one time. So we had to manage to, to access to, to, the, um, to the studios first. But regarding the process, and I'll let you guys uh, catch up on this, um, we really separate all the all the elements of the movie such as uh, all the walls were done by uh, one guy in particular uh, Sebastian was doing uh, the supervision of it uh, so he had all the elements uh, in his hand and he was the only one having all the all the effects and all the foley uh, and stuff and he merged it together to to, to give it the the final vi uh, vision of it Yes, and at, at the uh, really uh, start of the project, um, you have a discussion with uh, Tom and Ross, and um, just to see what they have to request, some some sounds or something like that. And after you make your list, you saw the you see you see the movie and you make your list, and uh, about um, uh, what we need to create the sound of the film. Yes, and what they asked in the beginning was uh, to have some uh, a lot of natural sound. Uh, that's why we try to work without any synthetic sound. I mean, at the beginning, because after we had some, uh, of course, uh, digital process on uh, different sound we used. But that was the, the main um, line that we tried to follow during the, the sound editing of this movie. Yeah. Thank you. Great, our next question comes from Jenny, T Jessica Tees, excuse me. No problem. Um, hi. Um, hi. Hi. hi, thank you for hi. joining us today for the press conference. So one of the things that I had noticed that the entire movie just sounded so beautiful and so smooth. Yes. What was your process in creating that? Because sometimes you'll watch a movie and you'll notice something is off it's because you realize later something, the paper crinkling was too loud or the music sound didn't really blend seamlessly with what was happening during that scene. However, everything just flowed as if it was just one huge music like composer score. And also even the sound effects were great. Okay, uh, so here, I think the, the most important part of uh, what you said is that uh, we had a reference here that the reference sound editor the supervising sound editor was Sebastian which uh, took everything I did and all the other editors did uh, and first of all he how can I say he just managed to put everything together and then of course we had the re-recording uh, mixer who mixed everything together to have as you said uh, that something that sounded like one score and uh, just, you know, so, so that all the sounds, they don't fight with each other. Um, and here something very important was also the use of the uh, Dolby Atmos, um, because we have a lot of speakers and all the sound can be really, um, can be clearly identified uh, between all the speakers you have in the, in the, in the theater. Yeah, yeah. And, and the and the thing also was that um, our re-recording mixer Fabien uh, was here in the early process of it. 
general, generally, uh, he comes by at the end of the project on the last three weeks. But for, for this time, because also of the COVID situation and stuff, um, it was really um, like the close collaboration between all the sound departments that made what you, what you heard, I think. Yes, you're right. It's um, it's quite it's not uh, usual actually to have uh, first the dialogue mixed and then we we could we were working with the mixed dialogue actually with the premix whether the premix which is uh, really convenient here uh, so that we know what are the, the level of the of the, the dialogue of the dialogue and voices and then we can just you know put all the sound and everything together so so that it, they don't mask each other and. Of course, after this, the, the final mix yeah. uh, made by uh, Fabian, who uh, just ma managed to set so, so we can hear everything and have a cohesion between all the different layers. Thank you. Our next question comes from Jamie Secker. Um, Secor, but yeah. Um, um, hi. So um, you guys said that you you wanted uh, they wanted you to lose. Oh my God, I'm sorry. Use a lot of natural sounds. Um, how often does that involve you guys actually like recording it yourself versus using something from like a sound archive or something? Um, there is a mix. Uh, when we saw when we saw the film, uh, we we make a list and uh, we check what we have and what we need for this movie. So uh, the first thing is uh, the director wanted to to have a, a, a real forest, you know, all the, the immersive details, some details in the forest uh, were very important for 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 the director. So we decided to have a, a, a sound field recording in a real forest directly in Dolby Atmos things like that. And um, um, for the wolf, uh, this is the, 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 the same thing. We recorded some, uh, we tried to record in some dogs and wolf because we need the two uh, species uh, for this movie. Thank you. Our next question comes from Rachel. Hi. Uh, so my question is, do you work with the voice talent and the music to make it all come together as, as a whole sound experience? Yeah, uh, yeah, Sebastian and Philippe are going to, to answer after, but yeah, we, we have some rough of the music, but uh, the fact is that um, to give the more uh, rich uh, sound feel as possible, um, the guys here managed to work without it also. So that at the end, the recording mixer can manage to take whatever elements he, he, he thinks uh, served the movie at that point. Wow. So in a way, yeah, they had uh, elements, but also they put it aside to give their, uh, their techniques and artistic direction to it and then the re-recording mixer doing the mix and the final um, the final thing. Yeah, here uh, towards the dialogues, uh, actually when we start to work on the movie, we receive all the, um, uh, the audio clips with the voices recorded. And uh, here the uh, dialogue editor, Anlise, had a lot of work to uh, try you know, to uh, find in all the rest of the sound that had that haven't been used uh, directly to find some little details to add, for instance, a respiration, a little something that can sometimes help uh, the characters to uh, to be alive on the screen. And for the music, we receive at the beginning uh, a, a temp music from the composer. So um, uh, just to know where uh, is the music and how is the music. It's very interesting because um, uh, you don't, you doesn't edit. Um, you, you, you 
Oh, sorry. Um, tu montes différemment uh, quant à la musique. Mm, OK, uh, because uh, here is when you have um, a, uh, actual music or even a temp music like, like we had, um, the work of sound editing will be a little bit different, different, different yeah. because you don't want uh, the music and the sound effects or everything to, 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 to fight each other. You, you want them to be like one part of one big soundtrack, which is composed of, of course, dialogues, sound effects, um, atmospheres and music. You don't want it to be separated. You want everything to, to be just like something co cohesive. If it's an English word, I'm not sure. Great, thank you very much. Our next question comes from Mario. Hi, thank you for having us. Uh, my question is, we know that the visual look of the movie is very different when we're on wolf vision, but how did the wolf vision affect uh, the sound or your design for the, for the general sound of the movie? For the wolf vision? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, that was a request from the director about uh, the sequence. Um, they wanted to hear the human dialogue of Robin, you know, in the POV, but they, they also wanted to hear the sound of, the, of Robin Wolf, you know? Yeah, like the translation. Like the, the translation of the human dialogue of Robin in Wolf, in the same time. So uh, it was a, a good challenge <laughs> because <laughs> we need to, we need, uh, of course, uh, understand the human sound, but have the sensation of the wolf sound in the same time. So um, we decided to, we, we decided to, to put the wolf sounds all around the speakers, you know, to have the immersive sensation and keep the dialogue of Robin human, human dialogue in the center of the speakers. And the, this is the, the same effect with the foley, you know, uh, step, step of the wolf is, is exactly the same, the, the, same, um, the same things we put all around the speakers. So you have the sensation to be inside a head but uh, uh, sorry, um, you are inside. You are, you are inside her head uh, completely. Mm -hmm. Yes, compared to a uh, more uh, classical treatment, which is normally you have all the atmospheres and everything all around you, and more the uh, effects and uh, fully in front. I mean, just behind the screen. Yeah. And here, that's uh, I, that, that was the one of the changing parts was to have a real difference between uh, the normal moments and uh, the POV of the, of the wolves. That's why we wanted to have something completely different, and uh, we achieved that with uh, what uh, Sebastian said with the, the the position of all the sounds here. All right, our last question is going to be from Jamie Green. Hi, um, I just had a question about the, obviously COVID um, sh cut short the theatrical release in almost every country, which is not something that you could really have planned for. Um, but knowing that the film is going to be distributed on Apple TV plus, uh, a large majority of the audience would be watching it at home. Mm -hmm. And so I'm wondering if that factored into your decisions for sound design at all, knowing that a large majority of people would be experiencing it through smaller speakers or a non-ideal setup rather than in a theater with completely immersive sound. Um, I, I get this, uh, this thing first, maybe. Um, the, the thing about Dolby Atmos is that you cr we created it in this format since the beginning. So, uh, Sebastian worked in Dolby Atmos uh, from the beginning and also at the end of the mixing and whatever the um, like the platform you are singing you are seeing it on um, you will get the sensation of it because we process uh, after all the artistic we process a technical part where we down mix uh, even for the stereo so the the, the smallest uh, way of uh, 
watching the movie. Uh, we use the Dolby Atmos system and uh, the creation uh, to, to even get the sensation with a small TV and a small speaker system. So yeah, I think the people uh, watching it on Apple TV Plus and the theaters, uh, the, the ones that get the chance to, to see it, uh, had quite the same emotion, but of course the theaters are way more uh, large in terms of uh, soundscapes and stuff. So yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's not that the uh, Atmos mix is better than the other ones, it's just that it uh, offers a lot more possibilities, which is very nice. Uh, I mean, it's like uh, watching the movie on a big screen in a, in a theater uh, compared to watching the movie uh, at home on, on a TV. So, uh, but here, as Brian said, uh, the re-recording mixer had to down mix everything so that we have the, um, we, let's say the, the, the plain version, which is the, the Atmos, and then we have the uh, 5.1 uh, Dolby Surround, and then we also have a stereo version. Uh, and all the versions need to, um, to, uh, to, to, how can I say that? Uh, all the versions want, uh, we want all the versions to be, to offer the same uh, enjoyment to the, to the audience. Uh, just that, of course, you only have two speakers. Well, that, that's it, but that, that's at home. But you can also, um, uh, if you have a little have equipment, a uh, yeah. yeah, you can have a really good experience as well, uh, watching the movie with a headphone or something. So it's not a problem. It's just a little plus, of course, if you have a good uh, sound equipment at home. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you.